Welcome to Out of Zion with Susan Michael, an exploration of the Bible and the land of Israel. From ancient biblical sites to the story behind the stories, join Susan on a journey through the most exciting book on the planet. Hit the subscribe button for future episodes, which will deepen your faith and bring the Bible to life. And now here's our host, Susan Michael. Well, hey there, and welcome back to our Going Deeper series this week with a very special guest, and it's going to be an amazing time together today. So a warm welcome to everyone. We have been on our walk through the Bible, and we are now deep into the book of Isaiah, reading it along with the chronological events of the time that it speaks to. So today we're taking a break from the chronology and we're going to talk about the meaning of the book of Isaiah and how we can apply it to our lives and how we can apply it to the life of our nation at this time. And so we have with us today a very dear friend and special guest of Kay Arthur. And we all know Kay, but let me just say a few words about her. Through television and radio and writing and speaking, God has used Kay to reach millions of households with his truth. And she's an author of a hundred books and Bible study workbooks. And um, I, she has just built an amazing ministry and has reached people all around the world with the truth of God's love, with a love for God's word and with a way of studying God's Word so that it makes sense and we can apply it to our lives. So she has taught uh, Precepts for Life, reaching 75 million households each day through radio and television in 30 countries and for more than 20 years. 90 countries. 90 countries. 90 countries. Can you believe it? I mean, wow. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so we are so blessed to have you, Kay, and not just because of our love for you, but our great admiration of you and the ministry that you have built and all the ways that God has used you. So thank you for taking of your time to be with us today. You're so sweet. I appreciate that, Susan. We are dear friends, and when we met, God just bonded our hearts together in a very special, special way. And not only our love of Israel, but our love of the Lord and just, you know, how you meet somebody and you two click and, and your hearts are the same and and uh, and yet iron sharpens iron. And, and so uh, it's it's a privilege to be here. And I I shouldn't have interrupted with the 90 countries, no. but I just found out I just found out that we're in 90 countries and we're in um, all the languages of those people of those countries that we're in. And so and we're teaching people all over the world how to study the Bible, how to discover truth for themselves and and to get into the word of God. So it's a privilege. And and uh, and I'm excited about Isaiah. Aren't you loving what you're learning, y'all? I, love I mean, Isaiah. can you believe it? Oh, oh yes, I yes, think yes. Isaiah is such an amazing book, and I mean, it it starts out with Isaiah two talking about the mountain of the Lord and going up and and the nations, and it ends with sixty six talking about the new heaven and the new earth. And I mean, it is such a powerful book. So, but please, let, would you share with us just your initial thoughts, like some introductory thoughts about the book of Isaiah? I believe that Isaiah is a book that is desperately needed now, that we really need to understand it. Because when Isaiah opens up, Isaiah is, is basically, people generally divide it into two parts. And that is the, uh, uh, the first part is the, uh, first chapters, Isaiah chapter one through 39, and then Isaiah 40 through 66. Isaiah chapter, uh, one through 39 talks about God's character and God's judgment. And it gives us the why, the why. And, um, I just, I, I have been taken with with what it has to say because it describes our culture and it describes I think I'm sorry to say but those that profess to know Christ you know 
And he opens up and he says in verse two, he tells us the days in which he's doing it. So it's important for you to understand, you know, it's the days of Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and, and Hezekiah, the different kings of, of Judah. So it covers that amount of time and the things that are going on. But he says, listen, O heavens, and hear, O earth, for the Lord speaks. And so one of the things I, I think we need to realize is when I open the word of God, this is the word of God. And what he says is absolute true. It's absolute truth. And it has the answers to every, every situation of life. And, but it also is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so he goes on to say, sons I've reared up, and but they've revolted against me. He says, an ox knows its owner, the donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. And I would say today, people do not understand what is happening. I mean, we are headed for a great collision course. The United States of America, uh, uh, if it survives what's happening and what's happening in our nation, I will be absolutely shocked. And, and so we're like this because we have a Christian foundation. And it says, an ox knows its owner, a donkey its master's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Alas, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity. Have you ever seen such iniquity as you're seeing in the United States of America? I'm 87 years old. I've been around for a long time. I didn't get saved. I had a religion, but not a relationship. I didn't get saved until I was 29. My life was so messed up. I was an immoral woman. I went from man to my, my first husband, sat me down on the honeymoon, looked at me and said, you are now Mrs. Frank Thomas Gates Jr. And these are the things I don't like about you. And I want them changed. And I found out I was married to a man that was bipolar. And that was just very, very very hard. And it ended up in divorce. I ended up in immorality. I knew the commandments of God. I went to church. I was baptized, confirmed, and thought I was a Christian because I was baptized and confirmed. Of course, that's not what the Bible says, but we didn't read the Bible that often. And it says, sons who act corruptly, they have abandoned the law. And when we look at what we have done with legalizing abortion, declaring that there are more than two genders, the things that we are doing are opposed to the word of God. They're against the word of God. And we think that we're smart and we think that we've got it, but we've turned away from God. And he says, uh, they have despised the Holy One of Israel. And that word, as you go through uh, Isaiah, you'll see Holy One, Holy One, Holy One. It's used uh, 25 times in the other parts of the scripture. And all the rest is right here in in. Um, in Isaiah. And uh, he says, where will you be stricken again? So he's chasing them. God is chasing us. And he's allowing us to go through this. So this is a very, very relevant book. And so the first part is, as you look at it, the first 39 chapters are like God's, uh, deal with God's character and God's judgment. And um, do you want me to just share a little bit about what I've I've learned about um, our messes and how Please, we get out of them. Please, because that's the the beautiful thing with Isaiah. It's so rich, and there's such a message for us personally. So please do share that. Good, good. Well, first of all, uh, I would like us to go to uh, to this. <laughs> sorry, I upstage myself. So anyway, y'all, I upstage myself. All right. Because when you come to the second part of the book, which is Isaiah 40 to 66, and you can remember it because there's 66 books in the Bible, it's God's comfort and redemption. So here is where you learn more about God. All right now, in Isaiah chapter 59, which summarizes this, what you read is justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the streets. I mean, we have fallen flat on our face because truth has stumbled in the streets. It's no longer heard. And it says, and uprightness cannot enter. And yes, truth is la lacking. And he who turns aside from evil makes himself a prey. Now, if I start talking 
about what the Word of God has to say, and I say there are only two genders, and no, homosexuality is not acceptable, and I start telling what the Word of God is saying, then I'm going to make myself a prey, right? Aren't we afraid today to stand up for truth? We know that it's wrong, but we're trying to be tolerant, we're trying to welcome, and we're trying to appease, and, and, and it's because we really don't know God. So when you go through and you read the Word of God, this is what I do, is I, I teach people, we're known as the colored pencil people, but anyway, I use yellow for God, and I use a yellow uh, pencil, uh, not um, a marker because it'll bleed through on your page. And every time I see something new about God, what I do is I color it yellow so you can look right down and see anything that, that is significant there that you want to remember uh, about God. And uh, so what you find out in Isaiah chapter 1 to 39 is how we get into messes and then how we get out of them. And so one of the things that, that I love is you come to Isaiah chapter 9. When you get to Isaiah chapter 9, you, meet Je- uh, you, you see this awesome, awesome prophecy about Jesus. And, uh, and he's talking uh, about the sad state of affairs in chapter 8 and that, and then the distress and the darkness and the gloom of anguish. And then, uh, then he says, but there's going to be a time that's coming where there's going to be no more gloom. And there is uh, going to be a, a time when the people that are, who are walking in darkness will see a great light. Do you know what Susan and I are doing? Susan and I are praying for you that as you go through the word of God, his word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. The passion of this ministry is to help you know God, precept, is to help you know God deeply and to live differently because you know God. And the, Daniel says the people who know their God are able to stand firm and take action, not to stand firm and take it, but to take action, to know what to do, to be willing to lay down your lives. Now, why can you do all of this? Well, he says in, um, in Isaiah, and I'm going to have to do this in a hurry, but Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. There's a time coming when he is going to govern everything in heaven and everything on earth, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. He's talking about Jesus, this child that's going to be born. and says there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David. And this is so important to know, the throne of David. David ruled over what nation? The nation of Israel. I mean, are you just appalled at the persecution now that is happening for Jews? It just it, it breaks my heart. It tears it up, you know. And um, I, I wrote a novel called Israel, My Beloved, and it's a whole history of Israel and, uh, and takes us right into, uh, you know, to the expectation and then the coming of, of Messiah. But when you, when you uh, read about it, you read about all the hor- horrible persecution and what was done in the name of Jesus Christ. But we know that there will be no end of his government. That's going to be put to a stop, and he is going to rule or a peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it, to establish his kingdom and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. That's the day we're working for. And that's the time, you know, if it costs us our life, we lay down our lives for that time, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, you know. And so, so, and that's far better, just in case you didn't know it. And, uh, and that, but we're going to live forever and ever. And so, as you go through um, the book of Isaiah, and you get into uh, God's comfort and redemption, we come to a point, um, let me just tell you a story about myself. Okay. And that is, after I got saved, God sent a young man to disciple me 
uh, and uh, he um, brought me a Phillips translation of the New Testament. Now, I had gone from man to man to man, and I had been uh, immoral and, um, and that. And he said, Kay, he said, now that you belong to God, let me get my ring off. He says, you're like my ring. And he says, and my hand is like the hand of God. And God has you in his hand. And you know the scripture. No one can pluck you out of God's hand. And God has you in his hand. No one can touch you. No one can say a word to you. No one can do anything to you without God's permission. Now, he didn't tell me then that he was telling me that God is sovereign. But when you get to the second session, I mean, the second segment, excuse me, uh, second session, you know, that means we'd like to go on and on. But anyway, you get, <laughs> when you, I love, I'm a boring, I love to teach the Word of God. I love to teach absolute pure truth and, and that that shows us his comfort and his redemption. So you get to Isaiah 45, and then I'm going to throw it back to you, Susan, I promise. Okay. But in Isaiah chapter 45, you have this wonderful, wonderful scripture. And this is in the part. In the second segment, which is chapter, what, 40 through 66, and it's God's comfort in redemption. And so when you get to Isaiah chapter 45, he's, he's talking to Cyrus, his anointed. It's a prophecy to Cyrus. The thing is, Cyrus hasn't even been born yet. And Cyrus won't be born until uh, much, much later. And, but he's talking to this guy that's going to be a king. And here's a prophecy. He says, whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him. I'm going to use him as a great king to na make nations bow uh, their knees before him. And then he uh, says in, in verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. I am the Lord and there is no other. So once you find God through Jesus Christ, you don't have to search for anyone else because you know your God. And he says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. There's no other God. So anybody that tells you about any other God is wrong. They're in darkness. He says, I will gird you, though you have not known me, that men, so that you and I, when we read this, might know from the rising to the setting of the sun that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord. And there is no other, the one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. COVID is a calamity. It's a plague from God. And, and so he says, I create well-being. I create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. And so what I learned is God is sovereign. He rules over all. None can tell him what to do. None can stay his hand. And, and, and that because he is God. So you see that in here. So, so what I learned is instead of mourning about my past and being grieved, I had two sons and they went through the divorce. And one of my sons saw me be immoral with a man. I would find that out later when I would ask him. And, um, and, and, and it breaks your heart because you, you read the Bible and you know what Christianity is supposed to look like in the home, what the role of the woman is and the role of the man. And believe me, the roles are different. And God has said it. And if you want a great marriage, you, you'll learn what the Bible has to say about it. We do have a course on that, a marriage without regrets. So when you learn that and you start to walk in this way, precious one, and you walk according to his word, you know that God has got your back. And, and that he is going to use you in this world in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation as you hold forth the word of life. And so what you see is you see these prophecies, more and more prophecies about Jesus Christ. And so then when you read the New Testament and see the New Testament, there are more references from Isaiah in the New Testament than all the other prophets, Zechariah or any of the other prophets. There are more references to, to um, uh, God in, I, uh, more quotes, I'm sorry, in the New Testament 
that are quotes from Isaiah than any of all the other books combined. So this is a very, very valuable book. No, I got carried away. So I, Susan, I got I throw so it back much to you. bubbling inside of me listening to this, so many thoughts. But I thought you were going to take us to Isaiah 49, which has that beautiful verse about that we're engraved on the palm of his hand yes. when you put yes. the ring in the hand. Yes. And uh, yes. I, you know, I yes. just think the, the book of Isaiah holds so much hope for us. No matter what is our personal situation or our national situation, that there is hope. And of course, our hope is found in that child that was born, that the government was put on his shoulders. Our hope is found in Jesus. But we see here in the pages of Isaiah that no matter how bad it gets, and it gets really bad for the people of Israel, that Isaiah is holding out there, but there's hope. It's coming one day. It's not all over. A lot is over, but it's not all over for the people of God. And um, I think that there's so much we can apply to our national life uh, here in the United States. And I know one of the verses I quote all the time, you and I quoted it together before we started recording, is in Isaiah 5. And it says, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. And that is the day in which we live for sure. We are completely losing our way. We don't even know what's right. We don't know who we can trust. We don't know who's telling the truth. And, um, And so what a perfect description of our day. But share with us now how Isaiah gives us hope for our national situation. I will. I want, I want to take you back to, because of what you said, you need to, when you read Isaiah, mark woes. I take like a red, I make it like a, a, a storm, a, a, a hurricane, you know, coming up the, the, you know how they look. And I just do it in, yeah, in, in a cloud and, and that, and I mark the woes. And, uh, so he, uh, says, uh, woe to those who add house to house and join field to field until there's no more room. In other words, they're just building and building and building. And uh, and then he goes on to say, woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may pursue strong drink. Then he comes down and says in verse 18, and this is what I think is happening today, I've never seen such wickedness and I've never seen such rebellion and lawlessness and and that is I'm seeing in the United States of America. And and I remember a different day. I'm old enough, you know, to re- remember a different time in America. But woe to those who drag iniquity with the cords. Woe to those who drag iniquity with the cords of falsehood and sin as if with cart ropes. And then he's who say, let him, let God make speed. Let him hasten his work that we may see it. And let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel draw near. And so he goes on. Then he says, one who who calls evil good and good evil, who substitutes darkness for light. You know, in Isaiah chapter 8, he says, if they don't speak according to this word, this is just before the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9. If they don't speak according to this word, it's because there's no dawn in them. They don't have light. The the sun has never risen. They're in total darkness who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those that are wise in their own eyes, clever in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes in drinking wine and valiant men and mixing strong drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away the rights of the ones who are in the right. And so he goes on and on and on. And so as you go through, you're going to see, you know, the judgments of God. But I, I just want to say, that when when we when you finish with this, I would go back. When you finish listening to this, I would go back and I would read Isaiah six, and there you see the Lord on the throne, and there you see what he's uh, what he's uh, telling Isaiah to do, and he's telling us to keep going and keep speaking, and you can read it all. And then he reminds us there's a holy seed in the stump. He's going to cut down the tree. If there's a holy seed, God will always have a witness on this earth. So when you go through uh, the book of Isaiah, 
you're going to uh, find much that you are going to want to mark. One of the things that you're going to want to mark, and, and this is what I do, is I put a blue cloud around it, and then I shade it blue on the outside and then yellow on the inside. And that's where I mark every reference to the coming of the Lord and to uh, his kingdom and when he is going to uh, when he is going to uh, reign and all that's going to happen. You know, um, we're, our time is drawing to a close, isn't it? Susan, is it? Well, we're getting close, but just a, a few more minutes. Okay, all right, because um, I want her to invite me back. <laughs> so I'm behaving. No, no. But one of the things that, and, and I just feel like I, I just need to, to share this. What if you don't believe? What if you don't buy the whole story? What if you say, well, I'll believe this about the word of God, but I will not believe this. You know, Jesus said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Every one of these words has been watched over and preserved by the almighty God. I mean, if he can speak and through his words bring the world into existence, certainly he can take care and watch over his word to perform it. And so this is, we are to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. There are 66 books in the Bible. How many books do you think God wants you to know? How about 66? Yeah, he wants you to know 66 books. This is your life. This is your life. And, and Moses says this. He says in, in uh, Deuteronomy, in his farewell uh, speech, he says, this is your life. And so I just want to urge you, you've got to know the word of God. I am so thrilled that Susan is taking you through the, through the different books of the Bible. And God laid this on her heart and she's being obedient to it. And, uh, and so now you need to do your part. It's, it's no accident that God puts you onto this podcast because God wants to speak to you. And God wants to take you into greater maturity. And Isaiah... And, and the way it closes, how many chapters are in Isaiah? How many books are in the Bible? By the way, how many books do you know that are in the Bible? How many books have you studied that are in the Bible? So there are 66. Well, when you get to the end of Isaiah, when he's wrapping up this whole big prophecy, listen to what he talks about in those last, last verses. And... Um, Isaiah chapter 66, and he's talking about heaven is the throne, his throne and the earth is his footstool, and, uh, and that. And then he talks about all the things that are going to happen. And then this is the way he closes the book. And he says, um, I will make some of them for priests and Levites. He's telling what's going to happen on his new holy mountain. The new heavens and the new earth, which I make, will endure before me. We're going to have a brand new heaven, brand new earth. And uh, so that your name, your offspring and your name will endure. Now, just remember, God created the nation of Israel. And the one that is going to rule over this kingdom is the son of David, who's from the tribe of Judah. And, and, uh, and Jesus is going to be... King of kings, and David is going to rule underneath him. He says, and it shall be from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all mankind will come and bow down before me. All mankind will come and bow down before me. Then they will go forth and look on the corpses of the men. Now listen, from new moon to new moon, this is going to be our pattern of life. I have eternal life. I don't fear death at all. I know absent from the body, present with the Lord. I know he doesn't, will not give me anything that I cannot bear. And I know that all that comes into my life is filtered through his sovereign fingers of love. So there's no fear. Perfect love. He loves me with a perfect love. Casts out all fear. But now he's going to come and he's going to look down on the corpses, on the bodies of the men who have transgressed against me. He says, for their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched. 
and they will be, they will be an abhorrence. That's why I was going like this, an abhorrence to all mankind. You're going to be able to see the people in the lake of fire. There is a lake of fire. And this is what God is saying. You say, well, I don't want that kind of God. Honey, if, I mean, or sir, this is the only God there is. All others are the figments of man's imagination. This is a God that loves you so much that he took his son who was without sin, who knew no sin, and made him to be sin for you and for me. He took all of our sins in Jesus who knew no sin Hanging on that cross was made to be sin. And that's why he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, he screamed it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus took and paid for your sins. They buried him and he rose the third day. He is the God of life. But you can know there are two places. There's the new heaven and the new earth. And there's the lake of fire where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Oh, precious one, this is your life. This is your life. You need to study it. I'm so thrilled that you're going through this with Susan. And um, I'm so excited, Susan. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. No, how powerful. And um, if this, maybe you've tuned in and this is the first time that you've heard this message we invite you now to just give your life to the Lord, invite him into your heart and uh, make him Lord of your life because uh, you will never be the same and you will be one of those that he looks down upon and it's like, you are mine. You are engraved on the palm of my hand. We're safe in the palm of his hand once we have invited him into our life and we've dedicated our lives to him. So we invite you to do that now. And can, I, can I tell you one thing before they do it? I got saved July 12, 1963. When I got saved, I was 29 years old. I tried to stop being immoral, and I couldn't do it. I was so hungry. I wanted a, a, a man's love. And I just ran upstairs I left my two boys downstairs and I ran upstairs and I fell down beside my bed and I said, God, I don't care what you do to me. I don't care if I never see another man as long as I live. I don't care if you paralyze me from the neck down, if you will just give me peace. And there on my knees, he gave me the Prince of Peace. That's what Isaiah 9 is all about. And he called me beloved when there was nothing lovely about me. And this is what I read in Romans chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 9. He says, and he called her beloved when there was nothing lovely about her. Listen to Susan. Listen and come. And Susan, forgive me for interrupting, but I just didn't want to close the program without telling okay, you. Okay, would you if pray, any, Would you lead mm-hmm. us in prayer then? Yes, yes. yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Father, I'm so thankful that you tell us that if any person be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Oh, Father, you know the ones that are listening to this. You know the ones that will listen to it because their friends are going to tell them. And Father, I just pray right now, oh God, that you would open the eyes of their understanding, that they would see the Holy One of Israel, who will help them to be holy, even as Jesus is holy, Father. Holy, sins forgiven, Father, a new creation in Christ Jesus, their bodies, your temple, and Father, your Holy Spirit within them to guide them and direct them and lead them. Oh, Father, I pray that you would create such a longing within them for the peace that passes all understanding, for the Prince of Peace, for the kingdom where there is no end to his peace. I pray that they would so long for it, that they would fall to their knees if they don't know you, and that they would cry to you and say, God, I have sinned. 
I have turned away from you, and I am so sorry, and I have ignored you and your word, and I confess that, and I confess my need of you, and I thank you that you've loved me so much that you gave me your son. And I ask you now, Lord Jesus Christ, to be my Lord, to be my God, to be my Savior, to be my Redeemer. I thank you, Father, that Isaiah is about your redemption and the comfort that you bring to them. May they experience your redemption. May they experience your comfort. And, Father, would you help them to want to feed on your word daily. Daily. We live daily by every word that comes from your mouth. So, Father, do your work in their lives. And, Father, give them then the courage or the joy to share it with someone else. Because if we confess you before men, you will confess us before our fathers in heaven. And, Father, no need to look into the lake of fire because we won't be there because we're going to live forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, for this woman and for the privilege of being Susan's friend and sister and co labor. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Kay. I'm so humbled and we're so grateful for your time today. And I know that we'd love to do one of these broadcasts on every book of the Bible, but what we'll do is. <laughs> is towards the end of our year, when we're wrapping up our walk through the Bible, I'd love to have you back and talk about your inductive Bible study, your method, and where our people can go next to go deeper in their study of God's Word. And so we'll definitely have you back. And in the meantime, I think, aren't you the one that told everybody about this special <laughs> pencil with the multiple I colors know. in it? And... Um, I've been promoting that to our readers, and I told them about my little coloring system, um, and that all through my Bible you can you can trace the subject uh, based on the color of the underlining. And um, so we look forward to having you back. I want everyone to know that in today's show notes, which are right below, we're going to link to uh, several of Kay's um, resources for you, and the first is her study on Isaiah. Uh, she has a study that is called Face-to-Face um, -to -face with the Holy God. Thank you. There it is. We're going to link to that in the show notes so that you can get a copy of that and go deeper into Isaiah. Today was just like barely scratching the surface of Isaiah. And then um, also her inductive Bible so we're going to give you a link to that. And thirdly, she mentioned to you today a book that she wrote a number of years ago called Israel, My Beloved. And so we're also going to link to that in case you uh, would like to also pick up that resource. So uh, once again, Kay, one million thank yous. Uh, you've blessed our audience. You've blessed all of us uh, with the word of God today. And we want to thank all of you who have joined us. Please take advantage of these resources and follow Kay's others, other teachings. And we'll see you back here in a few days as we continue our walk through the Bible as we are going through the book of Isaiah. So we'll see you back then. Until then, God bless. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Out of Zion with Susan Michael. Be sure to subscribe to Out of Zion now on Apple Podcasts, cpnshows.com, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen and learn. Out of Zion with Susan Michael is a production of ICEJ USA, all rights reserved.